how do you transition from being MAGCOM chaplain back to being the second seat, if you will, as the deputy chief of chaplains? You know, that when you are a wing chaplain and then you're a deputy uh, command chaplain, then you're the command chaplain, and then you're the deputy again. How do you, what advice would you offer for those of us who may be in that up and down, up and down, being the first chair back to the second chair, and particularly speaking of transitioning to being the second chair mm -hmm. when you have been the first chair for a year or two? Yes, I, I had two occasions to be a command chaplain at Air Education Training Command at Air Combat Command. I had great models in my bosses. Mm -hmm. General Bill Looney at AETC, General Will Fraser, and they were leaders who trusted, mm -hmm. who empowered, encouraged those under their leadership. Same goes for Chaplain Richardson mm -hmm. when I began to work for him. It's like going, maybe going on a tour, someplace you've never been. It's good to have a guide. Yes. Treasure the guide. Listen. Mm. Pay attention to what that person is sharing with you. They will choose well. They didn't get there accidentally. Exactly. General Looney, General Fraser, Chaplain Richardson. Mm. These are persons who had decades of faithful service. Pay attention. Uh -huh. And I hope I paid good attention to the leaders who shaped and formed me from the time I was a captain to the time when I retired as the chief of chaplains. I had wonderful leadership. They were my guides. <laughs> I thank God for them. I wouldn't yes. want to walk into the Pentagon without someone to mentor mm. and to guide me. Uh, I'm blessed to have those experiences. So trust, it goes two ways, but I think when the senior person expresses trust and respect for those under that authority, it's inspiring. It inspires competent, excellent duty performance. It ought to. And that's also a testing time yes. when the leadership and the Air Force can look at you and is this the person who is suitable? Mm. Is their duty performance suitable for increased responsibility? So it's a time to shine, to do one's best, to do it cheerfully. Yes. I loved every day of active duty. <laughs> this is what I wanted to do all my life. I mean, I thought of this when I was a little child. Right. And to be entrusted with responsibility is is a great joy. And in support of that reflection, I remember hearing from my mentors as I began PCS moves after my mm -hmm. first assignment. They would always tell me when I got to my new assignment, this is the most important assignment you'll ever have. Mm -hmm. I kind of got tired of hearing that. You know, <laughs> well, can everyone be the most important? Mm -hmm. In retrospect, yes. Mm -hmm. That is the most important job. Wow. The one you have now. Mm -hmm. Bloom and do your yes. best in this one. Yes. And then we'll see if we'll give you a, another job. <laughs> so to see each one as an opportunity, mm -hmm. too often, and this is not only in our AFSC, but throughout, I would often see persons who are so aspiring to the next pay grade mm -hmm. that they will be plotting to see, well, where will I go next? Where will I go next? Mm -hmm. How about today? What are you doing today? to be faithful in the responsibilities you've give, been given. In so doing, if you do that well, we'll see if you're ready for more. Mm 